It's a good hard frost this morning, look. Let me first dig dug. Um, it was working away yesterday and so I thought it was a bit of a panic job but the driver's off today so it's actually worked out all right there's no major rush um so i'm gonna get this one and then carry on up the hill to a 210 another 210 that one needs an environment temperature sensor this one here needs a left hand joystick because it's leaking um so we'll, we'll do that won't we um just had my salesman on the phone he's got the sounds like the same bug that i've had this week um, although I haven't seen him, I haven't physically seen him. <laughs> He's got the same bug. So there's some of the guy around Carlisle that puts you, put you in your bed just about. <laughs> so anyway, I'm feeling much better today, um, which is good. I'm on the mend. I'm on the mend. <sighs> I don't want to get out the van still. It looks very cold. You can see the damp rag down there. It's been sort of soaking up a bit of the oil and uh, it's damp in the back of there too. First job we do when we're doing anything with the pilot, well, doing anything with the hydraulics, um, just to avoid making a mess. Um, I've just turned the ignition on, lifted the pilot lever up and wobbled the lever about. That relieves any residual pressure in the system, which is stored by the pilot accumulator. I'm not gonna try and jump from track to track because it'll be slippy. It'll be slippy. And then what we need to do is relieve the air pressure in the tank, which there is none. That's good. Ooh. So we'll just rip this apart now. Um, take that cover off. Take that off. This is the two screws there. And there'll be two screws under here when we get this piece off. Oh gosh. Yeah, I'm gonna get my big jacket. <laughs> my trusty regatta. Put that on. That keeps you warm, I can tell you that much. There's the oil. Laying in the bottom of there. Right, we'll grab a screwdriver anyway. I'll try and uh, set up a time lapse over there somewhere so that you can watch us whiz it all out. Look. I've just got six pipes to take off. You gotta remember which way around they go. So we've got white, green, yellow, blue, white, red. But if we take them off and let them fall, they should fall in the natural position that they need to go into the new unit. Um, I haven't had a look at the new one yet. I don't know whether I don't think looking at the size of that box, it doesn't look like it comes with the handle, which is a shame, like, but. Never mind. Um, so yeah, in the, let's have a look. You can see how they're stickered up. L3, LT, L2. That is your left hand joystick. And those pipes all run. Show you. Down here quietly. If I can show you. Those pipes will run out of the cab and into that manifold there and you can see how they're all labeled the same l2 l4 and then we've got r4 r2 so um obviously the r pipes go to your right hand joystick and the left l pipes go to your left hand joystick simple you would say the t pipes so lt and lp is your pressure in 
and got T for tank out. So like I say, as soon as you start that engine, there will be a pile of oil. Uh, another one. When you start the engine and lift the pilot cutoff lever up, then there will be pilot oil running through and back out through the tank all of the time. When you drop that, that should cut off the pilot, which is your P for pressure going into here. Um, and if you wanted to swap your machine controls, why you'd want to, I don't know. Um, but I have done it before for a customer. In fact, it was in one of my videos, we did a DX300 demonstration and the customer was used to backhoe loader controls, BHL. So that there is ISO, industry standard operating. BHL, backhoe loader controls, is your sort of old fashioned, <laughs> old fashioned digger controls, which are still, I think in America, still use BHL quite frequently but you would swap the pipes down there at this side of that manifold rather than that side of the manifold because as you can see the other side of the manifold we've got T pieces and uh, pressure sensors so if you were to swap the what do you do now do you swap the dipper arm in and out with the uh, bucket arm up and down can't remember um, but obviously when you pull your dipper arm in you've got a pilot signal that unlocks the lock valve so if you swap the pipes over at the other side of the valve you'll be unlocking the lock valve for the dipper arm but trying to lift the main boom up and you haven't unlocked the lock valves on the main boom up you probably get a really loud bang. Um, the, um, there is an option to have a switch in the cab to be able to electronically swap it from ISO to BHL. That is an option. I don't think. Definitely on that 300, there was a plug there for that option, and it's just a solenoid valve that switches it over for you. Um, and that's basically what it's doing. It's just sort of crossing the crossing the lines over. Um, so yeah, there we go. Right, 22 or 21 mil Spaniards. We'll get, I think they're 21s. We'll get some 21s. <sighs> lad that called into the yard there, I don't know if you've seen him on the time lapse or not. There was a fella came in. He's a way to swap. I'll take dual wheels off three tractors. <laughs> I said that'll keep him warm. Right, there's my phone ringing. So I've got my first pipe off, which is L2. You can see there, there's no oil coming out of it, but I've put a couple of rags down in there just to catch any oil that might drip out of this control valve here. And the only two pipes that I really need to sort of cap off is the P and the T. Um, although there still shouldn't be any great amount of oil, the T will probably, depending on the height of the hydraulic oil level, it still may try and push some oil out of the tank into here, even though we've taken the pressure out of the tank. So I've got a couple of caps and bungs ready to go on. Uh, and I would imagine these fittings will be to whiz out and put into the new unit. I can't imagine they'll send new fittings with it. There we go. That is that removed. Lovely job. Right, let's see what's inside this box. Yeah, I don't think, uh, I don't think it's going to come with a joystick handle. So we'll, uh, I'll have to swap it all over. Ah, I was wrong. <laughs> of course I was wrong because if you look, I was weighing up the size of the box because I still had these fittings attached. I do have a joystick. Slightly different joystick if I'm honest. Um, it's not enough to make me want to swap it over I don't think, but this one is 
got a button in the bottom of it, back of there, compared to that one there, which is nice. Um, it's a bit more work to swap it over from that one to that one. And part of me wants to, <laughs> part of me wants to keep that. That would have been nice for that. Um, although it's not a latching switch, but if you had a extra set of pipes down the boom for working a, I don't know what. You know that log grab with the uh, chainsaw function. It would have been nice to have had that. Anyway, I think I'll just leave it as it is and just install that whole piece so i'll swap these adapters over lovely job yeah that was definitely the right because I, I ordered the part with the starsman and that was the only suggested part <laughs> i'm just swapping everything over but there's just one more thing that might be worth noting see this fitting's got a mesh filter in it is clean I can see through it and uh, that is coming into this valve here which is your P pressure so that's worth noting that because I suppose if your pilot pump was ever to fly to bits although you've got your pilot filter I suppose anyway anything any debris would be caught by that fitting and I suppose if you've got lazy hydraulics on one joystick compared to the other it may be worth looking at that gauze filter there because i suppose if you get a build-up of rubbish inside that fitting that'll restrict the oil flow which will may reduce your pressure i've never seen that happen before but it's a possibility and therefore you might have one joystick that's lazier than the other side Hmm. God, it is cold. I'm not moving about enough. I need to do star jumps while I'm doing this. So you can see I've laid the pipes in there. Obviously, P is going to that side. That white one there, L4 is going to the bottom. And that blue one there is going to go there. Um, if you were to rip it apart and not take any notice and then go to put it back together, on where was it where did i see it it's very vague to see because of the casting but you've got two one and you've got three and four and then your tank i'm sure the t will be listed somewhere i know p is so you should be able to plumb it all back together and if you have a workshop manual as well and those stickers are missing you should be able to, I mean, it's stickered at both ends. So worst case scenario, if you lost the stickers in here due to age, um, I know when those stickers get a bit of oil and then they can disintegrate and slip away. You could go to the back end and trace your pipes back through. Worst case scenario, but you'd not be daft enough to do that. If you opened it up and there was no stickers on there, then uh, you'd obviously use a coloured cable tie assortment and uh, pipe it back up. Right. I'm going to whiz this all back together and uh, I'll put you on a time lapse for that process. Right, I'll uh, start the machine up now. Oh, the radio's playing and I can't reach the switch, so I'll have to talk loudly. I don't think I've ever heard that song in my life. No, must be Radio 2. I'll start then. 
Look, there's all the stuff. What is that? Oh. Hang on a minute. Turn you off first. <clears throat> right, well let it do its warm up and then uh, once it's once it's warmed up I'll uh, try out my new lever. Oh that's a nice treat. Heat the seats on. Uh, so it's finished its warm up, I've packed all my tools away. So I need to make sure that that joystick is working as it should. Um, first thing is horn works. Now this thumb wheel here operates the rotate lines which this machine is not equipped with however if it was to ever be equipped with rotate lines we should check that that thumb wheel is working so we're going to the service menu go to monitoring vehicle analog input scroll down to the left hand where is it at flow control lever left hand voltage it's looking good at the minute but two and a half thousand millivolts all the way to the right is four thousand all the way to the left is one thousand so that thumb wheel's working now when we lift this pilot lever up and we swing that way are we going to shoot off that way let's find out we'll lift the arm up curl that bucket a bit then we don't drop all the contents so we want to just do this quietly just in case Oh, we're going the right way. That's a good start. Good. And then we want to bring the dipper arm in towards me. And that's working. Out the way. That's working. Good. Just need to check this button's working now. And the way we can do that is go to... Come over here. Digital input. Uh, somewhere down here Is it one touch deceleration yes one touch deceleration that button is working we don't need to worry about that button on the back of the joystick because it's not going anywhere so yeah that is it all done park it back up where we got it from now we'll head up over the hill into the forest and uh, I've got a quick little job to do on another 210. That was that one with the dipper arm locking up and it hasn't done so since. I know there's a question about that in one of my videos. That has been okay. Right, we'll lock up and go up the hill. Here we are, look, it's like a winter wonderland up here. And it is actually trying to snow as well. See a little blob just go past the windscreen there. Yeah, right, this shouldn't be a big job. This machine needs an environment sensor. I've changed a couple of these on the channel before. It's a temperature sensor on the back of the air filter assembly. Um, he's had it flash up a couple of times. But it's, I bet you, I bet you it's not active just now. Bet you. I'm going to change it anyway because I've done a couple of these now on these two tens. So I'll. Uh, oh, I've just felt that cold draft. Right, we'll get on. So there is snow falling out the sky. There is a good heavy frost. There's even snow on the ground. And my environment temperature is 44 degrees, apparently. <laughs> So that isn't correct, is it? Um, it's just dropped now to 43.9. Uh, so we'll change out that sensor. I think, I think. I'm sure it's that one, like. Environment. It's a. Yes, it is that one. So that sensor. Stop that. Save that. There we go. We'll key off now. 
code has been on this morning. Um, but what you do is you stop the machine, isolate it, and the code disappears apparently. Even though it's reading an incorrect temperature. Well, the fault code is saying that it's a uh, drift error, which means that, yeah, it'll be reading 44 degrees. Even if it's reading 44 degrees permanently, I don't think it'll put the error code on. I think it's just, um, that's the one in there. I can feel it. Can you see it? It's here. That's the one there. Um, yeah, even if it's reading 44 degrees all day long, I don't think it'll put the error code on. It's when it's probably reading 44 degrees and it drops to, obviously, the actual temperature out here. That'll be when the code will come on. So, I think we'll get that ripped out. Right, it's reading 14 degrees now with the new sensor in, which is probably a bit more accurate given that it's near to the engine and stuff, so... That's good. There's no engine management light on anyway, which is the reason why we're here. So, uh, yeah, this is the old one. It just looks identical to the new one. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Nice and easy anyway. 19 mil spanner just in that back door there. Right, I'll uh, get the details of this machine. Next, I need to go back through to Carlisle, my uh, glow plugs, which you'll have seen in the previous video, they should be in stock, we'll pick them up, head away down South Cumbria, and fingers crossed, we'll get that machine that doesn't like the cold weather, get it to start, get it to do a bit of work. Okay, we're back. At the little 35, what did I do with me glow plugs? In my pockets. In my pockets, look, here they are. You don't even get the nuts that go on the end of them. <laughs> I was very careful not to lose those nuts yesterday and I'm pleased now. Um, yeah, if you didn't see the previous video on this, basically the machine doesn't like the cold. It won't start in the cold. There was Tons of white smoke chuffing out the back of it when you're turning it over. Um, which told me it's getting plenty of fuel, it's just not igniting it. So we checked the glow plugs, checked the glow plug circuit and all three glow plugs were not working. That was <laughs> nearly swore then. <laughs> right. Okay, we'll get these. I'm gonna. I could do. I'm gonna get my head down and do this because I'll cut to the chase. The motorway was terrible coming down here, and um, yeah, it's a lot later in the day now than I thought it would be. Oh look, aeroplane! Yum. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a lot later in the day than I expected it to be. So to do is start of getting this job turned around quickly, and uh, if I'm wrong then it leaves me more time to re-diagnose it, but I'm pretty sure I've got it right. So just to double check before I go ahead and put all these back together, that there is set to continuity. We've got no continuity through there. And when I put it on here, it beeps. See that? There we go. Good, bad. If I really wanted to, I could put my jump leads on the van or the machine, put the positive to this side and just clamp the body of that with the earth and we'd see this orange tip glow red hot. I'm not going to do that because I need to be getting on. Okay, we're ready to start it, but a uh, yeah, customer's over just a minute or two ago there and chatting away to us. And as he was leaving, he shouted, there's Alistair. 
you realize you've got a soft front tire oh god oh my. honestly i've never had such a bad run of flat tires since i got this van do all sprinters just what it, what is it about sprinters and flat tires or is it just me <sighs> anyway conquer that battle once I've got this thing up and running everything's back on I took the executive decision just to put everything back together and then try it rather than try it and then put everything back together because I'm that confident let's see what happens hey man right heater lights on We ready? Look at that. Kennel straight up. Found it. Fixed it. Can't say the last bit. That is good news. Funny when you're stripping something down. So when I was coming down here, I was thinking, right, maybe about an hour putting that back together and uh, based off the length of time it took us to strip it out but I suppose I was spent 20 minutes messing about getting my leads out for the multimeter and diagnosing it and yeah it hasn't taken as long as I thought it would which is good <clears throat> so right I'm going to pack up and uh, what, what am I going to do next? Pack up and change the tyre. Mm. Mm, so this is interesting. Uh, do you know what I was thinking? A, a trolley jack would just slide straight in there. We'd have this wheel off in no time at all. But um, yeah, the problem I've got is I've, the bottle jacks that I've got are all too tall. Uh, that there looks substantial enough that where that bolt is but a bit uh, hmm. I'm going to take a hell of a jack in like <laughs> joys be interested to see what's caused that wouldn't surprise if it's a nail or something. Mind you, saying that, could be a stone from the forestry road, but I've driven about 120 miles since I left there. <sighs> right. Do I put a boiler suit on to lay on the ground to get that spare out? But I want to keep this jacket fairly clean. <laughs> All the struggle. Well, the good news is the part one spare tyre that I've got, if you remember when we had a puncture last time, the part one spare is for this side. So that's good. That means I could put a new tyre on that if I need to and have a new tyre as a spare. I'm still questioning how I'm going to put that cage up because let's be honest I don't need to put it back in that cage get that hooked in where's that hook at where is it oh it's in both hooks are in good I'll whiz them up where's my whizzer whiz whiz I don't dugger dugger them I just whiz them That's all it needs. That's it. What I need, what I need to do, is have like a big, big rack on the back doors with spare tyres just. Could probably fit about three spare tyres on this door. Maybe two because of the number plate, but that door, I should have like five tyres, spare tyres on the back of the van just. Maybe even like a super grippy set for 
you know, like the Dakar Rally. Just have some uh, some BF Goodridges or something. Right. I'll let this down. So you can't get my spare wheel out of that gap there, you see. I have to lift it up a bit. Right. Time to do some sketchy stuff. Do da, do da. Right, I need to jack this up. Uh, see what happens. Hey, all you lot reckoning that I was doing rally driving in the woods? It wasn't. The screw in a non repairable part of the tyre. God damn it. I don't think I'm going to get the height there. I really don't. I've got two jacks under it now. I max, the, max that one out. The one that comes with it. And. is that a little three ton jack i think that's a five ton maybe what will that be don't know but anyway the, the van is suspended and i'm not saying any more about it i did walk over to that fork let's see if it had a key in it i would have just slipped the forks under there with a block of wood <laughs> what this van needs you know them cherry pickers that have the have the access platform sticking out the roof and they've got little jacks that come down don't they that's what this van needs. The plumbing. Regular occurrence, this. Look at that little parsnip there. Oh. God. Like, it's not coming out my wallet, but you just feel like... It's discouraging, isn't it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. They're fairly similarly worn where's the wear points on there it's all the way down there look maybe this one is slightly no that's it about the same that's good right get this tyre rattled on turning this tyre changing job into a real feature of the video aren't I instead of the five minute job that it should be there we go, and to stop me steering wheel vibrating like hell. Get all that muck scraped off. Yeah. Right, let's put it back down on the deck and I'll get a bar and just uh, check they're tight enough. Uh, where's my doodah for letting these down? Uh, let that into position. Hold on. Stand back, people. There we go. Oh no. Make sure that we head between the, there and that. There we go. Tremendous. Right. Put that on there. Goodness me, what great content. I'll change the tyre. Oh, look, you see? You see? Look! Wasn't tight. That's why you always check. Always check. Never rely on one of them. Especially when I'm going to spend the next hour and 40 minutes on a motorway. Right. I'm happy. Well, <laughs> happy. Uh, content. I 
do that one Andy. Right, we're good to go. I'll pack up now and I'll round the video up at that for today because uh, on Monday I'm going to a job that is top secret. <laughs> it's not really but not allowed to film there. Um, and on Tuesday I've got another different job to go to but it's on done one of them pesky quarries so I've got a feeling that'll be a no phones out on site sort of a job so uh, yeah if I film whatever I get on tomorrow um, might turn into a video for the beginning of next week I'm afraid just try to think on alright thanks for watching if you've enjoyed the video let me know by giving it a thumbs up and for more bits and pieces throughout the week sort of little snippets of behind the scenes stuff that you don't see on this video check out Ali's Digger Diary on Instagram there's the occasional TikTok bit now and again but uh, Instagram seems like a friendlier place than TikTok <laughs> I'm still getting comments about you know that uh, oil, oil pump Milwaukee oil pump and I did a little clip saying, basically, does this Milwaukee pump pump uh, 80 W90 gear oil? And I pressed the on button and sure enough, the oil started coming out the pipe. Oh God, the amount of comments. This was back in the summertime as well, of course. Oh, it won't do it when it's minus five. It won't do it when it's minus 10. Oh, 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 oh. you think, I don't care. I don't care. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.